Ok. So, we're live. Uh. Live, alive, alive, alive. How's it going, Rebecca? Really well. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Thank you. So, we've been talking about... Um, how long have we been talking about uh, shooting this podcast now? Mm, ah, I would say probably two, three weeks, maybe. Yeah. And uh, so we're talking a lot about love relationships and a lot of interesting experiences, lessons that we came up with. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I think it's going to be of value for the listeners to to check it out what we got today. I agree highly. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I guess, um, would you like to go ahead and, and start with the first question or do you want me to kind of throw it out there for the listeners? Um, so let's go with the beginning of it. Like what is the love relationship and what is the point? Well, for me, honestly, the point of being in a relationship is really understanding how your connection with someone else can really show you more of what it is to feel love and what it is to give love, right? That, that reciprocity that we only really experience, you know, ideally with a family. And so as you transition into the phase of adulthood, that's, in my opinion, the next aspect of really showing and receiving love in a mature adult way, ideally, right? Basically, so your description would be learning how to show and receive love through the relationship. Yes. Okay. Yes, because when we show each other love true love then we're able to also see the shadows mm -hmm. and have more compassion for them so mm -hmm. that we can kind of transcend those barriers that are there together through this love okay so so through the relationship we get to uncover our own shadows oh absolutely and then obviously because who else is gonna show and tell about that Right, because the people who are closest to you are often the ones who see yeah. most of who you really are and vice yeah. versa. And also have that mutual level of comfort, yeah. right? To be able to come to you and say, hey, like, that's not cool. You know, yeah. like I noticed that they okay. see that the quickest. Right, because you know? if you would be floating in the space for nobody around, how can you know yourself? There is no feedback. Right, if you're not in society, if you're just a hermit. Right, if like, not in society. So the relationship would be like an, the the best way to know yourself. I think, yes. I think within a society, within how you interact with other humans, yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, okay, so the relationship is the best way to grow also, right? So if you know yourself, if you see your shadows, if you know where you um, have work to do, then it can facilitate the development, the personal growth of the person. Absolutely. I think that's the interesting thing to me is that the interesting thing to me is that honestly, when you are noticing your shadows, you're often in a space that could be triggering you for that shadow to come through. Mm. And so when we're in a relationship, there's some level of trust right. that needs to occur. And with that trust, that's when mm -hmm. you start showing more of who you really are. Yeah. So uh, the trust of uh, being vulnerable, right? When you take your ego shells off and then whoever you're there, like you're being vulnerable. Like what I'm trying to say, for example, for somebody to be humble in a relationship and not point fingers and, they, and actually look self-critically about uh, yourself, about your ego, is um is is a little um um what to say you're demonstrating that they um actually care about you because otherwise they would say i don't like this bye but right. because they care about you they yeah. say and they show that to you because they want it to change because yeah. it's affecting how they feel in some way to right. some degree otherwise they would leave and the reason why you care to some degree why it upsets you so much because you care so much about their opinion because you love them right right exactly exactly so um so anyway like what does it take for somebody in a relationship um to uh, let's say we have shadows and traumas in the relationship right and mm -hmm. of course the more you love the person 
the more they're going to trigger you. The more going to show shine the light on your on your uh, shadow. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so sometimes people would look at this type of relationship and say like, "Oh, this is unhealthy. Like, why are you putting up with this?" Right? Because like you have a problem in the relationship, right? But uh, that would not be a, a right assessment because the reason uh, all these problems and all these conflicts and uh, and fights happen is because something deep inside is being triggered and uh, it's actually a gift rather than a curse. I think that's a really, ooh, you just gave us a lot of really juicy stuff to mm. work with. So let's unpack that a little bit. Um, first of all, I'm a synth- psychosynthesis life coach for whoever's watching. Um, I'm not a licensed therapist to give relationship advice, but I do have a lot of personal experience, a lot of anecdotal wisdom, if you will. And I feel like I've lived enough to see enough to be able to have a few good pieces of, uh, of wisdom, if you will, on this topic, because it's very near and dear to my heart. And first of all, when you're looking at someone and saying, should I stay or should I go? Mm -hmm. Right. I think that's the first question. There's a song about it. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Uh, We we should add that in the in the edit somewhere. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Cue the song. Um, Should I stay or should I go? Yeah, I love that song. (laughs) But um, essentially, I think that when you're looking at those two paths, right, should I stay or should I go? Well, if you if you think there's a possibility for you wanting to go, it's because something's upsetting you, Mm -hmm. right? And so what is upsetting you? Is Mm -hmm. it the fact that this person is causing some level of uncomfort, of uncomfortability in you, which is causing you to push yourself to grow? Mm -hmm. Or is this person being abusive, unhealthy, uh, acting in a toxic way? How would you know the difference? So exactly, that's a really good question. So that's what's going to require a lot of Mm self-awareness self-inquiry and oftentimes humility Mm -hmm. because i think that the ego loves to get in the way and say whenever someone is saying something wrong to you why did they say that Mm -hmm. what about them what about them you know instead of you saying okay i actually have to look within myself and say are they saying something that makes sense about me or are they just speaking from their ego Right. Right. So I think it's a question of when okay. you're speaking from your ego or your higher self. Yeah. Um, and for those of you who aren't familiar with those terms, the ego is our is our aspect of our shadows that wants to speak to us so that we survive. Right. So it'll it'll act in a way that's going to say you need to survive to do this, as well as the higher self is our components that connect us with spirit, with source, with universe, God, creation, and speak in a language that will ultimately continue the progression of our consciousness and our evolution as humans. So they can just be like your intuition or, you know, your, your pride, mm-hmm. if, if you will. Okay. There's a, so pride and humility. I want to talk about that. Mm. Okay. So... Would you say the indication of whether should you stay or should you go or um, whether it's a healthy relationship or unhealthy relationship, because sometimes it may be difficult to say, is um, because um, like one little thing, and that is all these fights, are they being resolved, all these conflicts in the relationship, are they being resolved fully? Like is there a humility after or the ego is just straight up, still in the blame mode and does not allow to communicate like the inner emotions like for example sometimes with somebody would uh, act uh, out of anger right and they would just to say something and it would be out of anger where it would be like a genuine emotion they use their ego to cover the genuine emotion it might be sadness or grief and it just like lack of love right mm. but they use that ego and they now they in the anger right but so there's a difference that's a pride because it's been the blame mode. And then, of course, inside you have your genuine self, your heart, your true self, which would just may be experiencing emotion of sadness or grief. So, but for somebody to say, well, uh, instead of like, oh, it's your fault, you say, look, that's how it made me feel. That's much more vulnerable, much more humble, much more open. And of course, that's open for like uh 
like if you're in that state and if you don't trust the person that they would cater to what's going on with you genuinely emotionally then it may traumatize you and there's the fear of like i don't want to be vulnerable no i don't want to be genuine uh, because that i may hurt but in the relationship there's only way to grow is that way because pride is like stalemate there's no i completely agree you know there's this term in nlp i study neuro-linguistic programming and there's this term called your internal representation model Mm -hmm. your ir system and essentially what it means is that every time a piece of information is given there is a very unique personal understanding of what that information is so when something happens you see it some way and i'll see it a completely different way Mm -hmm. and so it's our job to never presume that the other person understood in the same way. Mm -hmm. So the way that this relates to relationships is that we're not here to read each other's minds, Mm -hmm. right? We're here to use our communication to engage in the unpacking of what is behind the language, what is the motive, what is the need, what is the desire. Mm -hmm. So when you're communicating with each other, sometimes you'll make a reactive statement and will speak through the ego. Mm-hmm. And so if we take that personally, that tack, then every time we're gonna say, oh, that other person said this or that, that mm-hmm. hurt me. Yeah. But if you're engaging in conscious communication, right, what you said about, oh, you said this and it hurt me, or you did this and I didn't like it because of this, mm-hmm. you know, like just uh, this accusatory language, that's actually extremely counterproductive. Mm-hmm. So whenever you're having an engagement where you're having a sort of interaction with someone in a relationship. And you know, this can also be in a, in a friend relationship too, you know, in any connection we have, it's always important to never assume Mm -hmm. that that person's internal representation system of the situation is the same as yours, Mm -hmm. because then you're assuming they can read your mind. Right. Essentially. Exactly. Exactly. You're right. I really think that you hit the nail over the head with that because we as humans, we are overestimate how much we understand each other, <laughs> <laughs> you know? So you talked a little bit about uh, the ego and the pain and uh, speaking from the ego, mm-hmm. right? And, and you said not taking that personally. So every time a person speaks from their uh, pain body, let's just call a pain body sure. because I believe there is a such thing as a pain body because we store our emotions in somewhere as a pain in our body. <laughs> You know, absolutely. So, so I think this is pretty real, pretty material. You absolutely. know, absolutely. No, I, I truly believe yeah, that. Yeah, in experience at least. So, okay. So if we have that pain body and somebody communicates their uh, emotions from the pain body, um, like how much value should the person give to anything that's been communicated out of pain? Like as a partner, imagine somebody's receiving all that and it's kind of, it may be hurtful. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, sure. Absolutely. But, but, but it's intended to hurt, right? Yeah. <laughs> it, from the ego point of view. Yeah. Because pain wants to create more pain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I have two things to say to that. I think that's such an important point to understand. Firstly, I'm, um, I practice a lot of breath work. I'm a breath work practitioner, mm-hmm. a certified facilitator. And so there's a really um, cool saying that we have in breath work and it's what the mind forgets, the body remembers. Uh And so essentially whenever we go through a situation emotionally, sometimes you may rationally say, Oh, I process this. Everything's fine. But really your body stores your emotions Mm -hmm. in a physiological way. If they're not processed, if they're not properly processed. And so when that happens, which is (laughs) unfortunately more often than not, Right. If we don't have awareness of this and don't have a daily regular practice to remove that energy in some way, it's going to come out yeah. in other ways. Yes, it will. And oftentimes with the people you are around the longest it has to in flow. your relationships. Mm-hmm. And so when you are communicating with someone who is theoretically communicating from their ego, mm-hmm. the value of that is that you see, first of all, are they communicating? You know them. 
you know them to some degree you know them mm -hmm. are they communicating from their pain body are they communicating from their ego mm -hmm. or are they communicating something that is in their highest interest interest and in your highest interest right. so that's the at first the heart. at the exactly from yeah. the heart chakra yeah, yeah. right so the first piece of information the, the value here is being able to perceive which one mm -hmm. right the second layer to this interpretation is if you don't know which oftentimes you may not because we just agreed that we don't know what everyone is thinking all the time right we, we can't read each other's minds even if we know each other really well you ask you ask mm -hmm. and what's really hard and something this is something i think anyone can relate to when someone says something hurtful to you it's really hard for you to drop your guard and say oh like why are you hurting so much no you, you feel attacked you feel right. like you need to be on the okay. defensive exactly but if you are able to let go of that mm -hmm. which is a practice that we need to come to okay you know if your mom attacks you if your partner attacks you if your boss your coworker, someone attacks you is f trying to see what is the motive of what this communication is mm -hmm. is it really because i did something so awful or is it because they are suffering okay so you said that I, I noticed three things so one letting go right the other one is having uh communicate in the question form right to say ask the question right if if don't assume it ask the question exactly and so and then uh, i think the third one which I think might be most important one is how do you react to somebody communicated from their pain body? Um, what I'm getting at is that uh, I've noticed in my personal experience is that uh, the best approach is to give zero credence to anything's been said out of pain. Like if anything's been said out of a pain, do not take it personally at all because it was not communicated from the true self. And I mean, this this kind of helps for me. Mm -hmm. But in case that does hurt, then we, let's go to the processing of the pain. So, like, what some of the ways people can process their emotional pain? Uh, this is such a broad question, and I love it so much. I think there's different layers of the ways that you can process this emotional pain. Um, are in terms of processing it in in a, in a relationship yeah well let's say we there was a a, a fight in the relationship and mm -hmm. there's some things were said like you know out of the pain body out of being upset so now that that stuff is sort of lingering and then you feel the emotion and maybe get stuck how does one deal with that well there's actually an amazing book i highly recommend anyone who is interested in developing their communication skills in any aspect of their life especially relationships it's a book called Nonviolent communication by <laughs> i don't know maybe you've read it before i know but like to name the book Nonviolent communication I know, to put the violence in it's it, cheesy, what is it it's loving cheesy. communication you know <laughs> i mean but isn't thing, that what it means but it's a critical issue i think the book title um by the way by uh rosenberg dr rosenberg is addressing a critical issue that we have uh -huh. in society today that it's yeah. hard to have nonviolent communication because oftentimes when we're communicating yeah. from the pain body yeah we actually are communicating in a potentially aggressive way absolutely always you know? aggressive so that's, that's the whole aggressive. point so essentially the book ties information down into how you can communicate into a simple method and it's just the skeleton of the way you should interpret a situation right. okay, when you're perfect. flipping the switch. Okay, perfect. Now, it's looking, I got a beef yeah. with that. <laughs> <laughs> you know why I got a beef with that? Why? It's because, okay, if you learn a technique to communicate from the heart, but you're not actually communicating from the heart, but you're just saying words, but you're actually bitter inside, and you're saying... You know, uh, like uh, kind, oh no 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 no! Words. It's not it's not a mantra. It's not like okay. It's not a script. Okay. It's a structure. Okay. It's uh you know a skeleton. I, I understand. But so what it's saying, for example, is that there's a situation. Let's say we're in a relationship. You said something to me from your pain body, and it hurt my feelings. Okay. I say, Kes, what you said. X, Y, Z, exactly what you said or the things that you said that were mentioned, I specify those things. Uh -huh. Or if you did something, I specify the action. That's what made me feel. This, sorry, made me feel yeah. X, Y, Z. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I don't want you to do that anymore. Or like, I want to understand why. Yeah. This is my recommendation as to what my needs are. Not what you're going to do, what my needs are for you to do in the situation. Let's talk. Let's go deeper into this. So it's basically just opening the door, mm -hmm. opening the window for that communication to kind of right. slide through. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, but um, uh, like, doesn't it happen naturally? Like, for example, if you have a fight and then after the fight, like you think things through, process the pain. It's common sense. The, it's process it's pain. Completely and completely common sense. And then you just naturally say those things. It's not revolutionary yeah, at all. It's not. Uh, it's it it. So then we 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 went to a a a, a, pin, a pivoting point, and the pivoting point is when you have a conflict in the relationship, right after processing that pain. So you go back to your person yes and with absolutely. the open heart not with the bitter mind well the thing is sometimes you can't control and those techniques how that the book is talking about will so work. yeah and and beyond the book even when you are able to come to your partner to the person you're speaking to and say not the, the thing to notice here is you don't say you are this i hate you because of this yeah. you say what you did you shrink it down to the very specific yeah. component of the information right. that's crucial yeah and that takes a lot of self-awareness to say exactly what was it that happened that upset me and exactly what it is that i feel from being upset exactly that's a mature way of communicating exactly. because if for example even in my uh, partnership right now when we get into a situation where we might not agree or we might not see eye to eye you know sometimes some a way that you can view how to engage in that situation is what, what I often say and my partner often says is, I just want you to understand. Mm -hmm. Or I just want to understand where you're coming from. Right. You know? Okay, I like that. And uh, I want to talk about understanding and agreeing. Mm. Because there, I think there is a difference there. Like if you have a... Uh, uh, sometimes people are afraid to understand because they may agree to something they don't. They don't want to agree. But th that's the, at least, um, perception. Especially, I found it with men like that. Like, men are afraid to look through, uh, you know, their woman perspective to understand them because, God forbid, they're going to have to agree with something they don't want to agree. You see? And... Um, I think there's a two different facets, agreeing and understanding. And I think people want to be understood, not necessarily always be agreed to, but as long as they're understood in mm. a way that's like, oh, okay, so that. if I would have to have that experience that you have, I would think the same way. You know, if the person says, yes, Empathy, exactly what I'm talking right? about. Empathy. Say, yeah, and sort of you just step yourself into somebody else's shoes. You be there for, for a little bit, it, you know. It may be scary because like, ah, oh, my beliefs are going to be violated. <laughs> But then, <laughs> but then you see from other person's perspective, it's like, holy shit, like I would feel the same way. And then you go back into your, you don't have to agree because you didn't have the same experience. You just taste what it's like to have sim similar experience. You see? So you go back into whatever you have and, and the agreement is intact. Like whatever you um, believe you wanted to maintain is still there if you really want it. It didn't go away. <laughs> But there's a fear of like, God forbid, I'm going to lose that belief if I'm going to uh, uh, like share somebody else's. Exactly. It's yeah. like if you step on someone's foot, right? And they say, oh, you hurt me. What is the normal thing people say? They say, oh, I'm sorry I hurt you. Like, I won't, I'll try to not do it again. Yeah. Right. You don't say, oh, I'm sorry that you felt hurt by my foot. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know? That's a, that's a, so that's the, in the same way, that's how you practice empathy in a relationship. Yeah. You know, you say, you don't say, oh, I'm sorry what I did made you feel this way. You say, oh, I'm sorry I hurt you. Okay. And that takes humility. Yeah. You know, because yeah. that's messing with your pride to say like, yeah. oh, like yeah. I actually did something wrong. Yeah. Or instead of saying, I'm sorry, that's your experience, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry that you had to experience me. Okay, all right. So, so we're talking about now communicating from the ego centric view, mm -hmm. and another one from the heart centric view or soul centric view. 
because the let's 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 change let I me mean, let's look at the languages okay like what would the egocentric view would say they would say it was your fault you do this you always do this and you know that's the ego mm -hmm. right but the soul centric view would say i feel like this you know you're not accusing anybody this is how it made me feel it's all about you nothing about another person because then another person may have a natural reaction for empathy. Like, well, I don't want you to feel this way, you know? So Exactly. Yeah. And they can only really feel that yeah. when you tell them, right? Because going back to our internal imp representation of the world is always unique. So as soon as you say, oh, this made me feel this way, you are giving the opportunity to have empathy. You are right, giving exactly. them the opportunity to exactly. experience your understanding of what happened because until then you cannot assume that they know what they did and how it was wrong or how it hurt right them. right okay great now we keep peeling this onion later, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so now we're deep enough to talk about <sighs> so what we're just talking about so the fact that someone has a different internal representation than you means that every time you communicate with them, you want them to understand you better mm -hmm. and the, you want them to understand you better and they want to understand you better. But it's a two way street, right? Because mm -hmm. in a relationship, you're growing as people because I believe we never stop growing. Right. We right, never right. stop changing. Right. That happens every single day as long as we are walking on this earth in this okay. human form. And so when we're growing together, we also change in the relationship. Mm -hmm. And so you can never assume that you understand everything about someone. Okay. Okay, perfect. So now let's take the that very thing that we just talked about, about somebody uh, saying like, I feel it this way about something, right? Now, it could be um, uh, uh, like, it could be two things. It's actually genuine like soul desire right something mm -hmm. that's coming from the heart or ego tantrum because if somebody is saying that uh like i don't want you to do this or do that because they're afraid and they're out of, they say that out of fear right and they say like oh you have to cater, cater my fear you got to cater my boundary and um a partner would say like well oh, that's like very irrational mm -hmm. like that's that's not growing that's just kind of being locked up into yourself you know and then was like, no, no, understand me. You like this is the way it needs to be. So, my uh, question is, like, how to uh, grow in the relationship? Because we, if you always cater each other's fears, you can't grow, right? Because like, oh, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. Like, you're at a stalemate, and the relationship does not grow. But when, um, um, whenever somebody is genuinely saying something and this is like their true soul desire this is what they really want they believe that this is what's going to make them grow then you open the doors up for that type of relationship and encourage uh, uh, that type of behavior but whenever somebody is saying out of fear i think it's important to cater the fear right to, to say like you know comfort the person but the, the uh, not support that behavior because it's not good for that person, not good for anybody else. And it's sort of, you should, you know, like I always say, lead with love and follow with the truth. Like if, you, if, you, if you're raising a child and you keep allowing the person, uh, your child, to behave in an inappropriate way, but I mean, the child is going to be declaring their wishes to, to behave with, in, and declaring their feelings too, and say, this is very important, you know, this is, makes me sad or whatever or you know tantrums and all that so then if the parent says okay keep doing this because i just want you to feel good all the time no matter what you do so that soon enough you have problem because the person is not growing it's, it's sort of you know still wild <laughs> i think that's a really good point i have two things that come to mind the first one is where is what you're saying where is it operating from? Where is it coming from? Is it coming from the ego or is it coming from love, right? We already established that that's really important to always have in the back of our mind. And so, for example, when I say something 
to my partner or when I even before I say it, when I think something to my partner that I think might come from my ego, it's my practice of self-awareness, my personal practice mm -hmm. to say, my ego is telling me this. Mm -hmm. My ego is telling me these feelings and my ego is telling me to tell you this. My ego wants me to say this to you. And that creates a layer of protection. It almost kind of lubricates the information to say, okay, you, me, Rebecca, I'm already making this recognition for you, Kes, to see whether or not this is something that is valid or not. Because then we together can navigate mm -hmm. this conversation. It's about seeing, okay, mm -hmm. what is the problem at hand? Why is it that we disagree on this? And can we handle this together? I think it's almost revolutionary to understand that when you are handling a problem as a couple or in a relationship, in any conscious relationship, you can handle the problem together. You're not separate people like butting heads the whole time. Okay. You're on the same team. Okay, great. This is this is perfect what you mentioned. It's um so what you're saying is that there's two people and um whenever they move their perspective onto the problem, which could be their own ego and traumas and, and wounds and all that. Or not. Or or not. Yeah. If the problem is that and they together sort of join hands and look at the problem together and then say, well, this is the thing. And then um, one of the partners may say, well, yeah, this is the trauma that I have and this is what I'm dealing with. This is the thing. This is something that I'm dealing with and I want to have less and less in my life. I don't want you to support that. But sometimes I, I get triggered and sometimes I feel these emotions. So when I feel the emotions, just like comfort me for the emotions, but then keep pushing me to grow outgrow that type of behavior. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. When you go through a situation in a relationship that makes you feel uncomfortable, it's important to state that and say, I feel uncomfortable because X, Y, Z is happening. And in the same way, I would like for you to help support me in my growth. How does my situation look from your side? You know, like for example, I'll give a more concrete example. In my, in my partnership right now, there was a time where I went through very heavy emotions and I didn't fully understand what the influence of those emotions were, was mm. and why that was affecting me so heavily. So it was both the origin of the emotions, what was the trigger of the emotions, as well as the depth of the emotions and how that could be altered in our actual um, reality, right? It, within, within our relationship at home, and when we go out, you know, between the two of us. And so in saying, hey, I'm feeling these emotions, they're, you know, they're intense, whatever, and I feel as though Part of the reason why I feel them is because of this action that you're taking, mm -hmm. because I feel like it's disregarding my feelings in okay, a way that okay. maybe you don't have awareness about. Okay. And that, w how do you know if those feelings are coming from your soul desire or from an ego tantrum? Because you would not want your partner to cater your ego tantrum, but you would want your partner to cater and support ego uh, you conversation know the, so. conversation it's when you see those feelings and you really look at them it's basically in a spiritual terms shadow work mm -hmm. you have to do shadow work with those emotions mm -hmm. and what shadow work is is it's looking at the parts of you that you might be ashamed of or you might feel guilt towards or you might try to repress for any reason. Mm -hmm. It's looking at that part of you, looking at it head on like I'm looking at you right, right now right, right. and saying, hello, how are you? You know, yeah. let's talk. Yeah. What do you need? I know, but you know, <laughs> and to doing some people, that together is so special. And this is the thing. To some people, that may sound like nuts, you know, to actually talk to yourself. That's kind of crazy. But uh, uh, like you said, this is what gives us opportunity to have a second perspective about ourselves. Like, because how can I see my own uh, ego through the ego? I can't. I have to, like, once I start having conversation with it, I create opportunity to having a separate awareness, which can then look at it and objectively reflect and not see that ego only in other people. And say, I hate this guy. Why do you hate this guy? Well, because he always does this. Like, that's what you do. 
you know and it's like no no it's that guy <laughs> it's that guy <laughs> that's the only way the, the ego can see is through the mirror but then if you move your awareness f not from the ego but into you know a, a just a very simple exercise that what you just said by just simply talking to yourself to your ego to like and trying to coach and guide and see like you know just a simple fact brings that almost like a meditative state of awareness where you are looking at your own ego and that, from that state is super humble and loving you know because you would look at your own ego with care and and compassion from that point so that little exercise may some sound nuts and i mean sometimes a lot of things what we call crazy is actually you know oh, this is this person is kind of crazy he talks with the dead people you know it's usually <laughs> an indication that they're somehow connected with uh, like uh, higher levels of consciousness that's well, what we I call mean, crazy we also study this in psychology you yeah. know one of the fathers known fathers of psychology um carl jung was one of the first to give the example the concept of archetypes right, right. we have the we have the ego we mm -hmm. have the transpersonal self and we have the unconscious yeah. right which is the yeah. deeper layers of the ego that are suppressed and yeah. so when you look at it from not even just a spiritual point from a psychological point of view which are all essentially very much overlapping in this case you can understand how there are different aspects of who we are that are oh, yeah. often uncovered absolutely and often equally um veiled suppressed you know hidden We're and not, so yeah. um my my favorite um psychologist actually who i'm studying in my um, transpersonal psychology course to be a spiritual life coach uh roberto asagioli mm -hmm. he from italy he was actually studying the transpersonal self transcending the self mm -hmm. at the time of the second world war mm -hmm. and was actually sent to be tortured because of his studies right as a psychologist right. friends with sigmund freud and friends with carl jung okay. as well so he said that there he coined it not shadows but sub personalities okay. these are aspects of ourself that we are neglecting that have a certain need, mm -hmm. that have a certain reason why they exist. And behind all of that, what he says essentially, and what we feel, but I, I've experienced this firsthand, and I'm sure many other people have as well, is that sooner or later, you will see that there are certain parts of you that come out to protect you. And even though you don't agree with them, they're there because of something else that happened. Mm -hmm. So what happens oftentimes, it's a boundary that was crossed. And because it was crossed, a wall came up. Right. And so oftentimes when we're dealing with difficult emotions in a relationship with a really difficult conversation, it's understanding that there are sub-personalities, there are walls, there are shadows, whatever you want to call it, that are coming up. Okay. And so it's a process of removing like unpeeling that onion essentially. yeah uh, so i see i see uh, so the way i imagine is that all those d different let's say when you have like a traumatic event at your childhood that that moment is still within us that little child that is hurt is still within us if we haven't healed it yet right so we are working as adults but we have all these different um, sub-personalities, if you will, that are very childlike, actually, right? Or it could be based on like very simple things like envy and stuff like that. But then that little child inside just throwing a tantrum and overlaid with the massive, massive, let's say, intellect and power. But deep down inside, there's just a her child, you know? <laughs> So what what usually happens, like they come to compensate and protect that child, you, I mean, people create massive um, armies out of that insecurity. I completely agree. I think, um, you know, going back to the point of, of why those boundaries are up, you know, why that army is there is because something was not addressed at one point. There was some... Yeah level of transgression that happened even going back to what you were talking about as a child if the child is you know throwing a tantrum and you're not operating out of love 
a stern, firm love that's disciplining your child because all that tantrum is showing is that they want boundaries, you're actually not showing them love. And I think at the root of this is first and foremost seeing, are you operating out of love or are you operating out of fear? Mm -hmm. Because if you understand spirituality explains that the world only operates from two frequencies at their core. You're either operating out of love, mm -hmm. which is evolution, growth, change, maturity, yeah. awareness, yeah. or you're operating out of fear, right? desperation, hurt, uh, yeah. trauma, yeah. right? That's the side of the emotions. But there's another side of the coin, if you will, and that is the side of truth or lie. And uh, this is where I, I developed this little model about... Um, like what it means to experience bliss and what it means to experience pain mm. and um, love and fear. This is could be you can take life decisions and go through make a life decision based on love or it's based out of fear. OK. And then if there's another side, there's there's you somewhere you're living a lie, let's say. Or on or the opposite in in uh, another perspective, somewhere you, you're living the truth. You found how the life works. Right. And then you are experiencing love. That's bliss. Every time you living your truth, doing the right thing, and experiencing love, is well-being mixed with excitement. That's bliss. And that's biologically and in psychology and psychiatry also the same thing. You mix lots of dopamine with serotonin, blessed out. So it goes all the way to the molecules. This thing is like permeating the core of of our reality. But on the other side. We have fear and, and a lie, and that will always lead to pain. And some people, and then in the middle is there is a desire. So we have desire, we can help to have desire, and based on the choices, we're either are going to end up in pain or are going to end up in bliss. And, but this, you see what I mean? This is the game that we play. And so we keep ending up in pain, then there's so much there is, we're living out of fear, and there's so much we're living a lie that we're lying to ourselves about something and to, and to others. And uh, as soon as you st start being, telling the truth and loving, start experiencing more bliss. And the irony of that is that when you are operating from the point of love, you will generate more love, right? That's love attracts true. love. Yeah. And yeah. when you're operating from the pain body, from the ego, from fear, from lies, yeah. from untruths, right you are actually generating more of that because Absolutely. you're feeding into it and so yeah. you're kind of clouding your mind your vision if you will more and more with essentially the inability to reach the other side mm -hmm. but that's not to confuse with it not being possible okay so if the pain propagates pain and love propagates love okay so Let's talk about, essentially, we reach all the way to the energy level now. We talked about arguments, now we're talking about energies, which is essentially the same thing, we're just zooming in. It's a yin and yang. We're still talking about the same stuff, just on an energy level now, right? I love that, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, okay, the, um, the energies. Remind me, the last part. So, essentially, when we're talking about the energy behind a conversation, the energy behind your motivation to understand someone else and their motivation to communicate with you whatever is going on in the moment, right? If you come at them with loving energy, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what they say, you will have a significantly higher probability in helping them uncover what okay, is behind okay, what they're okay, saying okay perfect perfect thank you so now so um so when the person comes uh, with the loving energy will uh, they always have the response in a loving way to their loving energy well we we can't say no but i mean just uh, like any life example where somebody's being loving and somebody actually was mean back is that is that true is that happening in life of course yeah it's possible okay so then we have a situation when somebody's spreading love but getting back uh anger or you know fear right so it's um, shooting out a high vibration and receiving back a low vibration so um 
so when you when you're trying to be loving and expect uh, everybody to when you try to be love when you, excuse me i'm going to rephrase that not try to be loving but when you are loving and you just feel happy because that's what it feels like you know it, you feel so happy joy and, and, and enjoying life you will piss some people off because not everyone's going to be happy about your unconditional happiness you know that's that's a, that's the hurdle to handle when you think like, oh my God, like, I mean, I did all these things, I, you know, I healed and it's like, and now I'm happy and nobody supports my hand. My, well, not like a nobody, but um, there's still some people who don't support me being happy. It's like, you know, that's the first hurdle. Um, but then after that, you you realize that, okay, if I keep on being loving and some eventually will tap my energy out, that negative vibration coming my way, eventually tap out. So the question is, where do you uh, s uh, fill up on that energy? And how do you fill up on that energy? Because it eventually will be drained out if you do not refill it. I think that's a really crucial point to talk about is um, energetic protection, right? So if you understand that we've already said that when you are around someone who has a different energetic frequency than you, a different motivation, you know, a different energy you, vampires we energy call vampires for example good i love that word i it's mean a different I don't, type of vampire. i don't love it but i for they're on energy not blood <laughs> um they will feel uncomfortable with your happiness and they will also maybe consciously or unconsciously want to do something to alter that mm -hmm. right because if they're at a lower vibration they want to bring you down mm -hmm. vibrations always want to match yeah when, when there is a difference is when there is distance, mm -hmm. right? So first of all, it's by practicing a lot of self-awareness on the way that people are acting and how it's affecting you, right? The way they speak to you, the way they act around you, what they do to you, for you, against you, whatever. Having the self-awareness of saying, okay, exactly what they did, going all the way back to the beginning of this conversation, being very specific, right? What the book Nonviolent Communication was saying, specifically what it is that they're doing that is affecting you somehow. Looking at that, that's the first point of view. The second thing is that you need to, you know, if someone's draining your energy, is looking at how is it that they are draining my energy when I have all this time outside of what I spend with them to do things for myself. So it's about looking at the cause and effect side. Are you saying I'm just receiving everything? Everything people are doing is affecting me. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. you know, okay. or is it about taking control and seeing what can I control? Okay, so so in other words, how do I maintain my high vibration? Right, even though there's a lot a of people are, are you know still being mean they to me. That's, it's a victim mentality to say, oh, I feel this way um, right. because someone did something, therefore I cannot change. Yeah. No, it's about saying, okay, if they made me feel this way, you have two options: either you say I'm going to change how I'm how it made me feel, or oh, okay, okay. I'm not going to be in their life anymore. Okay, They're okay. not going to be in my life anymore. Okay, so taking so, control so yeah exactly so going back into yourself now and uh, uh saying that okay it's not that other people make me feel this way it's that i choose to react that way and you, you put all the balls in your court and say okay i chose to react this way like you put the re um, responsibility in your corner so i chose to react this way because i didn't i can have any kind of reaction if I cho if I reacted that way, there's something that I still need to work on on my myself emotionally and spiritually. So when that person behaves that way, I'm not triggered, and on top of that, I just feel compassion for them. Exactly, it's a practice of stoicism, which sometimes comes easily and sometimes not. Well, I think stoicism is more of like using a willpower, uh, you know, not to react. It's more like a patience, and you're burning the willpower. And some people have a lot of willpower to burn, and they can. But I think what I'm talking about is actually not even to have that button anymore. It's gone. It's melted. It's not there. You see, rather than I'm using my willpower not to react, that's one way. Another way is that I don't need to use any willpower because the button isn't there. It's just my natural stream of energy. Somebody's beating me and I'm just, I love them, you know. And it's just the way you are. 
and that comes through the spiritual growth you the, like what i think Sadhguru said the the mind can only inform it cannot transform you see so you, the spiritual experience is necessary for somebody to grow and not to actually use the willpower not to react that way but actually transcend that and just just be that new person you see so I think this is like so great that we talked about relationships and how relationships dialed in all the way to the spiritual growth. And so going back to the very beginning, my opinion what relationship is, is that is it's about the spiritual journey. It's about the spiritual growth. It's basically you picking your spiritual journey partner. That's what you're doing. Like if you look at it that way, all these arguments and all these uh, conflicts in the relationship would be opportunities to grow you'll see them oh there's another one let's grow you know <laughs> so in and, and if you look at the relationship that way as a potential spiritual growth it's a different perspective about it's not about getting a house and kids and everything that's just a a, a, a byproduct of, of actual harmonious relationship and love rather than trying to do it the other way let's say let's get all the things what means love and let's see if i feel it and people, get, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so people get the car, get kids, get everything. And it's like, why don't I feel love? You know, I thought like they have all the good things. Everybody on TV in the culture talks about that. And it's supposed to be very happy. Why am I not? Because everything was backwards. Instead of looking for the connection with the person and how harmonious that is. And like, what is the potential of growth there? Uh, everybody got the external stuff. Not everybody, but a lot of people get the external stuff first but if they focus on like how uh, like how do they feel with the person sitting next to them on the couch rather than whether they're married or not because so what did you married for five years how do you feel seeing, sitting next to it like do you you're still vibing you know or is their chemistry still there like because if it's not then you got all the technical stuff that makes love but there is no love I love that so much. And I think that when you operate from that perspective of, you know, a relationship is here to help you grow on your spiritual journey, then if you if you zoom out a little bit and you say, okay, every person I interact with, to some degree, I'm in a relationship with, whether it's for two seconds or a few months or my whole life, you know, in some way, then you understand that every single person is there to reflect back to you an opportunity for you to look within yourself and say, okay, did what they do trigger me? If they did, why did it trigger me? What they're saying, is it coming from a place of love or of fear? And you do that with every single person you communicate with, which is a practice of being conscious, mm -hmm. right? Having conscious communication, right. then you're able to take that information take that experience with every single person you're with and say okay this was something that happened to me for a reason yeah right okay i had a relationship that was you know quote unquote toxic yeah and when we broke up i was devastated at the time and yet now with this with this interpretation which i i fully resonate with it's saying you know, we were together for the exact amount of time that we were together for a very specific reason, mm -hmm. because that relationship made me grow exactly. more than any other relationship exactly. in my entire life. Yeah. And so when you can say that about every single person you interact with, especially the ones that challenge you, right. that show you things that you don't want to see, yeah. you know, they're there to help you grow. Okay. Not because, oh, the world is shitty. Yeah. You know, not because, oh, why do I always have these exactly. things happen to me? Because you are not okay. moving out of that. So then we're talking about this very interesting thing is that this is the relationship you want to stay in, right? The person that challenges you, that triggers your buttons and show you all your shadows and makes you grow. It's challenging. But like if you want to stay with the person, if you find love, it makes you grow. This type of relationship is the one you want to stay with because it makes you grow. But it's not like it's... In, in the very definition of that very uh, passionate and, and fast-growing relationship is that there's a lot of conflicts to resolve, you know? So by saying, like, I don't have conflicts in the relationship, you got to check yourself a little bit and see, you know, how do you feel about another person? 
So like you see, you, you don't go have the any Guinness conflicts. Book of World Records because <laughs> I don't think that exists. You yeah, know, it <laughs> probably doesn't. You know, but if it do, but if it does exist, what well, some people say like, well, everything is perfect. You know, like we don't have any kind of conflicts. Well, then I don't th- like. I mean, they either super transcendent and like highly spiritual beings, <laughs> or they're in denial that they're in love. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think that yeah, it's. It's a key to, to note that if you want to grow with someone, then you are going to face situations that will make you grow. And by definition, that is exiting a comfort zone. That is transitioning out of something into something higher. Mm-hmm. And so it's a practice of self-awareness when to stay and when to go, mm-hmm. right? Because I, I, you could argue that if I stayed longer in that relationship that I considered very toxic, that maybe I would have grown more. But in that specific case, it was in my highest good to leave because I met the person that I'm seeing now, for mm-hmm. example. Mm-hmm. But if, if, and also because there was no sign okay, of yeah. wanting to grow. Sorry, I gotta remember this one. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to interrupt you. Um, are you done? Uh, I, one more thing. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> There was no desire to grow. There was no desire to change, to admit guilt, to admit fault in anything. Right. When the trajectory is not in parallel towards the same thing, transcendence, mm-hmm. higher understanding, then it's not worth staying. Mm-hmm. But if both parties are committed mm-hmm. to that growth process, mm-hmm. then yes, it is okay. worth staying. Okay, so there's a type of relationship where there's sometimes there could be a lot of passion, but there's just, uh, let's say, too much pride and no, no openness to work on it and resolve things. Just just the people remain closed, but the, the relationship could be very passionate. And then that's the one that you kind of leave, right? Because it's just all passion, whether it's, a, you know, a positive or negative. Uh, but there's a lot of um, that and there is no resolution there. And that's where there's a frustration. You keep wanting to resolve that issue, but just keeps popping up and there's no resolution. And then you kind of get stuck in it. And then you say, well, I kind of have enough of that. And, uh, but if you're in a passionate relationship and you have the openness, then this is kind of speedway of, of evolution, of self-development. Because sometimes it could be like just too much, too much to handle, right? Like, oh my God, what's going on? Like, it's too much. It's just too much stuff that is happening. Too many shadows that are being revealed. It's just like, ah, demons all over, you know? And then it's like, okay, this is too much. I may just want to leave that relationship because there is no way I know can handle it. Nobody knows how to handle it. I just don't know that, you know, don't feel like I can handle that. And I think it's perfectly fine if you don't feel like you can handle that. And obviously, obviously it's also very important that both people are open to to grow. They need to be. That state, that stage is so important because if you don't have that stage, um, then you may have a, a love of your life, you meet your love of your life, but you don't have that capacity, that maturity to open up on both sides. It's not going to work. They but you may no. that person wasn't the love of your life then. Well, sometimes you don't know. Sometimes people meet, <laughs> like you we know, have thirty years I, later. I now that they're much more mature, and then In, at that then time, works. right? Okay, at that it time they weren't meant to be and at that time it wasn't the love of their life exactly i believe you can have multiple um people that are the love of your life your soulmate your twin flame whatever at any given time um i mean if you're polyamorous you can say that you can have multiple but in my case in 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 being a monogamous uh you know person i believe that at any given point you can have a different love of your life and so whether or not you revisit that relationship in a, at a later date, I think is absolutely completely on the table. Fair game. You know? Right. It was just not ready at the time. Exactly. It, it, it could be like there is occasion. There are occasions like that when people meet, not a time. And then later it's perfection. You know, that happens. And then some relationships are are sort of like on and off relationships like uh, um Jennifer and, and what is what is that guy's name? Uh, that J-Lo? paleontologist from Friends. Oh, in uh, Ross. Ross, Ross. And, and not Jennifer. Jennifer Ross Anderson, and Rachel. Rachel, yeah. Jennifer Aniston <laughs> and then that dude. I don't know. I remember the girl's name, but not the guy's name. I don't know why. 
because uh, she's beautiful and talented and you know her in so many different things and he's kind of kind of fallen off the grid a little bit but and yeah he's <laughs> he's funny but but yeah sort of classic archetypal dull. characters yeah i yeah. i agree anyway where were we we were talking about, about relationships something <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so the idea that you can revisit a relationship oh, at a later date. Oh, that's right, date, that's right. You know? Yeah, that happens for sure. And um, But the re the requirement, like like I think we both agree that the requirement is the openness to grow. Like the challenge the is... Willingness, the, the the willingness, the challenge is, 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 is a game. It's, it's, not, it's not abusive anymore. It's like much, much more mature way. And then I think with time, this is what I'm learning in my relationship as well, is that you learn to communicate better and better each time. At first, like, ah, yeah, yeah, you know? <laughs> and, and then later, it's like a little bit, yeah, 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 a little bit more quieter, you know? And then you start communicating much more openly and you don't uh, trigger each other. And then eventually, I suppose there is a trajectory, you know, it gets better, where you can just communicate so openly that like that, that conflict that pain that comes up is healed right away it's like le like you know real time processing stuff eventually i believe there is a point I, like that i don't believe that because i know that. that oh you know that i know oh, it okay, in okay. in my in my everyday life um okay. you know it's a really beautiful thing to be able to communicate about a difficult emotion to be able to travel through the journey, it's really a journey of all the ups and downs that you feel when you're talking to your partner about yeah. something you're going through or something they did or something you're going through as a couple um, and be able to unpack those feelings in a very deep, sensitive, vulnerable way and see, okay, what is at the heart of this right. and what can we actually do about it? Yeah. Because sometimes all you want is to be heard and understood. Right. And sometimes you want them to help you navigate a solution you don't always have to have a solution but there always is an intention behind what you're going through when you're having these difficult levels of communication and i can assure you with every drop of blood in my body that your connection is so much deeper so much more pure okay. when you have those breakthrough moments. Absolutely. So you fall in love all over with the new person. Absolutely. Yes. That's what the, yes. my experience was. That has also been my experience. Yeah. And I think this is like when you, you're in a relationship that you're perpetually falling in love with each other. It's like a fresh car smell. I mean, what do you call Like a new car smell <laughs> all the time. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a bit of a hack yeah absolutely yeah so I, this is what i noticed in life is that life is kind of difficult until you figure it out and once you figure it out you feel like you're cheating in life because it's like oh, this is easy why is it so difficult you know and of course like we're talking about and we have our own experience and we're going through all that change and we're somewhere there in the process of that mm -hmm. and of course there's some there's some other person that's just like a guru at it you know and <laughs> it's just a natural thing for these people but we're somewhere on the spectrum and we are like all growing and developing and trying to figure that stuff out. Because I think it's worth trying to puzzle this thing out rather than I mean, what's the other alternative? You, We are here. We either puzzle this thing out or what? Check yourselves out and try again later. You see, like we, we can't escape this game. We pick this game that we must play. That's the rule. Num this is the only, <laughs> I mean, it might be only rule in this game is that <laughs> you have to play it. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. And so when you understand that we're playing the game of life, you see that in this game, we're all just trying our best to get to the next level. We're all just yes. trying our best to survive and to grow in whatever way that we feel that we can. How is much more cooler looking at the relationship as a game? <laughs> as it's a love game, isn't it? Imagine it's, it's imagine how many people would play a simulation of the relationship game? I think there might be a lot of people who would be like, hey, let's play the simulation of relationships. You know, and there's a lot of plates flying all over. It's like, ah, I messed <laughs> up there, you know. <laughs> how could you do this to me? Throwing yeah. shoes. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. <laughs> relationship simulation. So anybody's listening, you know, on YouTube, like, create that. That's going to be big. <laughs> I mean, I feel like you can already probably do some 
smaller version of that, like in like a Sims game or something, but definitely not to that degree of of, uh, of depth and yeah, reality. Yeah, but what if? I, do you see how much we like covered? There's, there's somebody can go as deep and make it uh, that simulation game not just like fun, but also a, 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 a accurately reflecting the psychology of the human mind, you know? And then, you, then you can, you know, I, I love games, and I, I actually games helped me to look at life more as a game. Like when I got into business, to me it was a game because before I played the business games and like I figured it out. And this the real life would be to me at least I don't know not maybe for uh, um, most other people, but to me it was like it's the exact same thing, and I enjoyed it. And just like with the video game, you play with, we play, we play, you have some success, everything, and then you get bored and you, and, and you drop it. That's what happened to me with business. Like for about five years, I was so into it. And then after that, I'm like, I'm dropping the, you know, the remote, uh, like, uh, you know, the, the controller, the controller away. It's like, I'm done with this game. <laughs> you know, what's next? Yeah, I agree. I think in, in that way, you know, not in the sense of like a mind game, um, I don't think we should play, play mind games with each other. I think we should be very clear and direct. And when I say clear and direct, I'm not, I'm not saying like, hey, like, this is what it is. You know, I'm saying just be transparent about how you feel, right? Mm -hmm. And so not that kind of game, but the game of understanding that we don't need to take everything so seriously. You know? yeah. We can be so much more, um, we can really enjoy so much more of life yeah. when we treat it a little less seriously because ultimately at the end of the day in the grand scheme of things you know we're all going to leave this human body one day so we might as well enjoy our time here exactly. you know if we if you want to get really meta mm -hmm. if you want to get really um up there and philosophical like why spend so much time focusing on fighting and focusing on the stress you know if if you take the understanding that this life is seemingly so fleeting, we don't know when it's our time to move on, then why spend so much time focusing on the things that don't matter? In a, especially in a cycle too. Right. Like, like behavioral exactly. cycles in a relationship. Like if you, uh, you know, film somebody's relationship, it would be like, isn't that like the same thing every week? And, <laughs> and that's, what it's, that's what it is. But... And you, you asked, like you said, like, why is it so difficult? Why can't we just enjoy ourselves? Why can't we just play this game? It's because it, it takes balls, like, to be vulnerable, to open up in the relationship and, and just have your heart open. And, and that's that takes balls. That's jumping out of the airplane kind of balls, you know. And a lot of people don't want to face it. It's like, ah, that's your problem. I don't want to look at it, you know. And they, they remain stagnant. So... Uh, that see there's a little domino that as soon as you push this over everything else falls into place and that is willingness to lean in into your fear and face things and open up and be like humble and vulnerable you know with uh, with your partner Absolutely. and if you do that then it becomes a game I mean what happens after you jump out of the airplane well for me when I went skydiving I was the last person in line. Um, this was my first my first time skydiving maybe, I don't know, three, four years ago. Um, we were the last people in line. And as I saw people moving, I was like, oh, no, like, I think I think I don't want to go anymore. And then the guy with me was like, well, it's a little too late for that. Mm -hmm. And then I, I kind of stuck my hands up and I said, oh, I, I don't think I want to, like, go right now. Like, can we just wait, like, an extra, like, 10 seconds? And he said, okay. I'm going to count to three, and when I say three, we're going to go, okay? Are you ready? And I yeah. was like, yes. He said, one, and we jumped, yeah. and <laughs> it was the most insane okay. fear for maybe five seconds, uh -huh. maybe, and then it was absolute pure bliss, Okay, like the purest bliss you could ever experience. <laughs> Can you use that metaphor and apply in the relationship? Have you experienced that breakthrough in the relationship in a similar manner? Oh, absolutely. Where it was like a fear to do it. But absolutely. Then, then you, do you need it, to go to like the depths of the belly of the beast the before the beast. you can come out and come to, you know, paradise. And see the light and experience the light and the bliss. Exactly. And that's what happens in relationships. It's, it's almost like uh, you, you need to go through, face the fear, through the fear of the tunnel. The light is at the end of, of the tunnel of fear. I would say that. 
Well, there's, I think the truth is there's a light at the end of every tunnel. The question is. The tunnel is fear. The tunnel is the fear. Yeah. The tunnel is the fear. And it's a matter of understanding, like, why maybe I can't see the light. Uh Uh-huh. But if I know it's there, then Uh it's worth traveling. It's worth traversing those fears. Yeah. Seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. And this is like you either have faith in the light at, at, at the end of the tunnel or it's best to have at least one jump out of the airplane, which I need to do <laughs> because I'm using that metaphor a lot. So, I mean, I have to do that now. And then uh, it's a life changing experience. The light at the end of the I tunnel. 100% recommend it. And that is, I think, what the breakthrough is, is that if once you do it once, you see that there is a light at the end of the tunnel, that there is a bliss if you play You know right. how to get there. You know where you're going. You know exactly. what it's going to look like, what it's going to feel like. And then you can keep reapplying it to uh, uh, all the other facets of your life because then you know what's the principle. The principle is face the fear, go through the tunnel, boom, and uh, light at the end of the tunnel. I love that. Yeah. I think it's, um, yeah, I think it's really important to understand that sometimes if you are acting out of the faith of seeing the light at the end of the tunnel and you, you don't know whether or not it's there, you haven't seen it yet, you haven't experienced it yet, then, you know, an example of how you can do this is looking around you and seeing what do I want to model for myself and what do I not want mm-hmm. in my life. And seeing how what you currently have, how that might actually be a reflection of the positive or the negative, a reflection of what you want or a reflection of what you don't want. Mm -hmm. And so in that way, when we do that, we can then say, okay, here's a list of how of the things that I want for myself in a relationship. Mm -hmm. And I want these things because they make me feel this way Mm -hmm. and they make me feel good and they bring a certain level of happiness and growth but into it, my life. Mm-hmm. But perspective of, uh, of the soul, not ego. Perspective of the heart, whatever we can call it. It needs to be genuine you. Because ego may say, like, I want to have this. I want to have this. And then you get it, and it's like, eh. Well, the lesson would be there is like, uh, there is like uh, I, don't, I don't feel bliss. Like, I mean, okay, it was fun for a little bit, but, but now, now what? You know, so uh, if the ego is making a list, um, I think if the person is aware whether the ego is making a list or the heart is making the list, then that's great. Because then, of course, they're not going to chase something that is not even theirs for like a little bit of satisfaction rather than fulfillment. You see, so the list is very important. I mean, I would advise people making a list, make sure it's coming from the heart. And you may not want to do that. It, because you may think that like, well, no, I actually want this instant gratification thing. And say like, this is what I want. Then you get that instant gratification thing and then you find out that like, could become dependent on it rather than uh, making a list and saying, well, is this is like what's going to make me fulfilled? Nah, maybe not. Maybe, okay, I'm going to be like happy and you're going to show off in front of other people. But this is going to be, I don't know, just for a little while. I don't know if I want that. I actually want fulfillment. So then you change that into something that's coming from your heart. And I think that list is so important to come from the heart. You know, so so whenever you write that list, I advise to write it. You better write from a deep meditative state or after the spiritual or psychedelic experience. Then you are more in your true self and whatever you're going to write then, that's going to be your true path. Because you may want to yeah. scratch that 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 you know, new Lumber, Lamborghini, you know Lamborghini. <laughs> you want to scratch that you know, like a uh, Instagram model or something like that, you know, and just keep on scratching. This is, and then you find what you truly want. Yeah, I completely agree. I think that it's important to you know, if you're gonna take anything from what we've talked about today, it's understanding that there are two places to operate from. One is fear and one is love. Mm-hmm. And at the bottom of everything is, um, at the bottom of fear at least, there is a deep sense of hurt and boundaries that were crossed and perhaps an inner child that was never fully tended to in some way. And so seeing, okay, if this person has all of this going on, they have the pain body, right? 
Is it worth it for me and my growth to help them uncover that for themselves? And what does that mean for me and my pain body? Mm -hmm. How are pain bodies interact? Mm -hmm. Are they pushing each other out of the pain body or are they keeping each other in? What you just said, you said my pain body. When somebody says my pain body, they no longer say I. Because they no longer identify with the pain. This is my pain body. You see the difference? And if somebody is uh, looking at their pain body from the perspective of as my pain body, not saying like, oh, I am in pain or whatever. I'm in emotional pain. You're living in the pain body. There's no help there. There's no escape from that. You know, if you're, if you're, if you're there. But when you say, like, okay, I have a pain body. It's my pain body. And it's my karmic uh you know inheritance if you will whether than whether from your parents and whether from the past lives the parents is parents usually pass the baton on to us and say okay this is what i did with my life here's your baton go ahead figure you know now it's your turn and then when you inherit this baton and you see like oh some people may say well parents messed me up and say okay parents messed you up how about parents gave you an opportunity to resolve your karmic puzzle and grow. So it's a gift uh, by your parents to you. Then you take responsibility rather than a victim, you take responsibility as a hero of this. It's like, okay, I'm gonna play this now. I'm gonna take you know, my pain body and, uh, and my shadows and I'm going to work on them. It may take me time, it may, it'd be fast, it can be slow, it doesn't matter, but I'm taking this thing. I'm no longer blaming anybody about it. This is my thing to do because if I do that, uh, guess what I'm going to pass? All right, we're back live. So <laughs> we have this little pause, little in, in, intermission as they say. <laughs> All right, you go. You said something about wrapping it up. Yes. So honestly, I, I think that it's really important to understand that from all the things we said today, right, it's whether or not this person's pain body is helping you grow or not, whether or not you are helping them grow or not, because yeah. if that's not happening, then it's probably not in your highest good or their highest good for you to be together at this time, maybe at a later date when you're both mm -hmm. more mature, yeah. maybe not. But yeah. at this time, you need to separate. Right. And the more inner work, personal work you do, the easier it will be for you to revisit that person at a later mm -hmm. date. Mm -hmm. if, if none of those things are happening, mm -hmm. right? If you don't see that yeah. trajectory right yeah. right then and there. Yeah. But if you do think that is in your highest good and that there is a chance that they are reflecting back to you an ability to grow within yourself, within themselves, and you do feel bliss in some ways, mm -hmm. and you do feel true love and purpose with them, um, that's what you want to continuously manifest for yourself in every relationship and especially in um, a romantic relationship. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what um, a course that I'm designing right now called Divine Harmony is about. Oh, so nice. um, if anyone's interested, that's something that I'm going to be releasing um, in a little bit. So stay tuned. And um, yeah, I think it's really important to be able to see, um, you know, outside of the course, like what is... The frequency that I'm operating from, what is the frequency the people around me are operating from, moving out of this, um, you know, cause and effect side of being the victim mm -hmm. of what's going on and releasing the, the need to feel something about what they're doing instead of looking at how it's affecting you and how you can change that so that you can grow, so that you can move forward and progress mm -hmm. in your life and ultimately experience the best out of life in any given situation with every card you're dealt mm -hmm. so every time people get together uh two people there's obviously two pain bodies right and the more loving the relationship the more connected at the soul the more connected uh, you know soulmates twin flames and, and things like that the more they're connected at the soul the less tolerance will be for the ego because that love is going to be strong i love that yeah and then you better grow fast. So much. Yeah. <laughs> you better grow fast. You yeah. better grow fast. <laughs> yeah. And that's why these relationships are very, very um, passionate. There's a lot of turmoil there, you see. And uh, sometimes people say, well, like sometimes, sometimes people look at it and say, how can you be bothered? Well, because you don't get it. 
because there is I found my soulmate and uh, it's worth to get uh, to resolve the issues it's worth to get rid of my pain body it's worth to help to to get rid of the pain body of my partner so we can help each other to, get, to you know heal ourselves essentially and grow spiritually mm -hmm. and and why do you want to do that because you this is the person that you can experience the most love and bliss and that is why you don't give up and that is why it's the best motivator to grow as a human being I it's love i agree i completely agree yeah wow let's wrap it up with that <laughs> put up here boy yeah nice nice so thanks rebecca for showing up Thank and you. Uh, hope Thank I wish you. you luck with the, all the projects and hopefully we can do a lot of good projects in the future. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>